Today I am building a plant stand out of a 60 year old crab apple live edge wood cookie. Hey everyone, how's it going? To start this project off, I'm actually going to have to jump back in time a few years to July 2017. I hadn't yet started uploading videos, but I was about four months into recording my projects. Danielle and I had decided to remove this crab apple tree out of our backyard that was presumably planted roughly the same time our house was built, 1959. I'd managed to limb up the tree and take down the non-cookie sections out of the top of the trunk before my little chainsaw overheated and completely melted the chain brake mechanism. Serves me right for getting the cheap chainsaw, I guess. A couple weeks later when my brother came into town, I got him to swipe my dad's chainsaw for the day and we were able to finish slicing up the cookies. Crazier how much easier a taller bar and a beefier engine makes this process. Add to cart. With the cookies sliced up and moved into a corner of the garage, I stacked them with evenly sized pieces of wood, also known as stickers, to allow airflow in between each cookie to dry them out, also known as a sticker stack. Since these cookies are mostly end grain, they really wouldn't have needed long to dry and I really should have coated the end grain with something to seal them up to allow them to dry out a little bit slower, but I didn't and pretty much all of them split right down the middle somewhere. Either way, they spent the next few years in their sticker stack getting shuffled around my shop. Jumping ahead to present day, Danielle bought a plant and a giant pot to put it in and said make me a stand out of one of those cookies. So I said okay. So after picking out one of the cookies, I could get started on this project. They're all fairly similar. Kind of rotten in the middle, so I'd probably like take all this out. But I'd leave it like broken in half. These are all quite a bit bigger than I was thinking. Mm. But it's a good size for that pot. Mm -hmm. This cookie is nowhere near flat, so I will need to flatten it. I set up some rails on the sides of my workbench out of some scrap 2x3s and 2x4s. Luckily I still had my router flattening jig which I made in a previous video. You can check that out up here if you missed that. Pulled my big router out of the router table which you can also check out up here if you missed that and threw it into the plunge base. I decided to go with a 3 quarter inch straight cutting bit since it was what I had and then I could start the very messy process of flattening this cookie. Once I had the first rough pass done, I flipped it around and using some scrap plywood and some screws, I locked the cookie into place and continued flattening the second side. Once that was done, I could lower the rails, flip the cookie over and resurface the original side. With both sides surfaced, I moved on to getting rid of the rotten material, which I took care of with some dental picks and files, which got the majority of it out. Next I move on to removing the bark, which I took care of with a chisel. This probably would have been a bit easier when the wood was still wet, but either way, eventually I was able to take out all of the bark and get down to the sapwood. And now it's time for sanding, which took forever. Granted, apple is a hardwood and end grain is harder to work with, but I don't think I even bothered to go higher than 80 grit on the end grain. It took forever to get rid of all of the router milling lines and really, I don't even notice a difference in feel between 80 grit and 220 grit on this project. It's ridiculous how long that actually took. The sides of the cookie, which was side grain, sanded relatively normally, and I think I did go up to 220 grit for that. With the sanding finished, I can move on to finishing, which was another process that took absolutely forever. Again, since it was end grain, the spray-on gloss polyurethane absorbed into the cookie like it was a sponge. At least for the first couple of coats. By the third, the majority of the cookie was pretty much sealed up except for the couple punky sections at the opening of the crack. Which in hindsight is probably why the cookie blew open right there. The punky sections just continued to suck up the finish so at this point I moved on to the non-spray can of poly and just kept dabbing it on until it basically either filled up that portion of grain or finally scabbed over. Either way it took about 7 or 8 coats. I kind of stopped recording the work at this point since it was going to continue to be more of the same, but once I had the finish solid, I took the cookie back out to the shop and gave the end grain a quick sanding with 320 grit to smooth everything out, which, hey, guess what? Reopened the scabbed over punky sections. At this point I was pretty much done pissing around with it, 
and I just covered the punky sections with CA glue. I didn't want to use activator since I wanted it to absorb into the cookie as much as possible before it cured. Once it did, I took it back out to the shop to sand up again, a couple more final coats of finish, and the finishing is finally done. Last step now is to screw on some hairpin legs that I ordered, set the now table into place, and immediately cover up all of that finishing work I did with this massive potted plant. Potted plant. Yes, it's legal in Canada, but it's not that kind of plant. And with that, this project is done. Other than the finishing and sanding issues, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. And it's pretty cool to think that this is just a chunk of tree that I pulled out of my yard because it was dropping apples on my concrete patio, which is actually where our patio everything is now, which you can check out up here if you missed those videos. With my current renovation projects on the go, it's sitting in a temporary home at the moment since I just needed to get it off my workbench because it was been there for a couple months. And Danielle's already said that she kind of likes that one where it is, so I'll probably end up making one or two more in the future. I don't know, we'll see. I still have a few pieces of crab apple left, so probably. I don't know if I'll record it though since I already did one. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video, and have a good one.